Hey everybody, uh, I'm going to dedicate this one to my dad because he was always pushing for uh, synthetic oil in my car. I don't know what else is <laughs> out there, but he's always pushing for full synthetic uh, eh, high celeste. Uh, when were hydrocarbons really formed? Um, now basically, dogma has it to where life decays into oil and natural gas. So the life forms and then it decays into oil and natural gas later down the road. Um, in sudden metamorphosis, life and natural gas and oil begin at the same time <clears throat> because they're hydrocarbons. The formation of hydrocarbons and the evidence for hydrocarbons is already in the highly evolved stars, uh, Neptune and Uranus. Hydrocarbons are also found in the atmospheres of Jupiter and Saturn. So the formation of hydrocarbons is natural, and it is essential component to the beginnings of life. And that's the really strange part how um, the, the dogma has life forming, and then it decays and gets buried and becomes oil and natural gas, when life itself is composed of long-chain hydrocarbons and fossil lipid... Uh, um, bilayer uh, walls of cells and fatty acids um, and methane uh, we know where methane comes from <laughs> uh, decomposing stuff in our gut but um, now it was really strange because it feels as if a lot of science and a lot of academics and a lot of the entire thing they just sort of want to disconnect life from oil and natural gas and then try to reconnect it after the fact so they flip-flop it so instead of instead of oil and natural gas being sort of how do i word it here um how do i be I have here, this means oil and natural gas are more likely the leftovers of the formation of molecules required for life to form. They are not the end result of the decaying of organic matter. So, oil and natural gas are leftovers, not from life decaying, but from the beginnings of life when we're when we're di drilling into the crust of the earth all that material down there that we're finding was the stuff that never came alive so to speak and that's how i have it written here and all those hydrocarbons that were forming in the atmospheres of late stage stars such as neptune and uranus and even um middle age stars such as jupiter and saturn it does sink it gets heavier when it forms in the high atmosphere and as it combines together through certain chemical processes, um, it the chains grow, the chains grow longer and longer and longer, and heavy material does fall into the interior. And as that uh, star uh, forms its crust in later stages, it can trap that material that was formed er in earlier stages. That's why we find things like methane buried because it's it was buried in when the when the interior was forming inside of uh neptune your saturn and jupiter and that's why we have a lot of helium inside of those natural gas deposits where we get most of our helium it's because the helium is left over atmospheres of these late stage stars and it got mixed in really well and then when that interior crust was forming it had trapped the helium that was already there and a lot of the a lot of the academics believe helium is the byproduct of radioact all the by only the byproduct of uh, radioactive material uh, disintegrating, but that's not necessarily true. The majority of the helium was is there because it was trapped in earlier stages of star evolution, and that's that's another thing. I'm kind of getting off tangent there, but basically, to to wrap this one, when were hydrocarbons really formed? They were formed in early stages of uh, intermediate stages of star evolution. Uh, 
not as a result of life decaying. So they got it, they got it kind of wrong there. All right, later y'all.